everyone, welcome back to the Blast R6 Manchester Major. I'm Ginny, your host this time around. Join with Laxon as well as Alpha. Hi. First time we're working together. Yes. But we're back since this We are back. Yay. That, since that's I. I feel like yeah. it's been forever since I've seen you. Oh, you missed me that much I already. Did, I did. I did. I did. Either way, let's uh, jump straight into it because we've already had eight best of one happen today across both Stream A and Stream B. And just to give you guys a little bit of a recap in terms of the games that we've had a look at, let's start off with this bracket particularly. It's a lot to take in, but I want to start with the focus on the 1-0 games particularly here, Lax, because the biggest upset, of course, for me personally, would be Secret. Really? I mean, yeah, I, I would I would agree with that, actually. I mean, one thing that's always been impressive about FaZe is they're a quick team to adapt to many other teams, many different play styles. So the fact that Secret came here to this event, made this event, and takes on FaZe in this Phase 2 bracket and beats them at a 7-3, that's pretty impressive. I think especially as right now, if you looked at their stage, they were unbeaten in Brazil, arguably the best region yeah. in the world. And you kind of saw them, actually, I saw them as the number one seed coming in, in the event. That's that. I think everybody did. Yeah. yeah. And somehow they still lose to Secret, but honestly, Secret is the worst dark horse you want to face as, as you know, a starting match. Like, they're so unpredictable that on, I don't blame FaZe on this. And I think a second one that was kind of worried, uh, worrying me was uh, ITB beating SSG. I was actually surprised. Mm. I think that's an upset for me. I can agree with that too. One that really stuck out to me was M80 Liquid specifically because M80, obviously, we've known them throughout the last stage and through SI. They were horrible internationally. So the fact they're finding Whoa. some success, I, I'm saying it, they were horrible, plain and simple. But the fact that they found success today against Liquid and Liquid have been putting up quite the performance yeah. as well. But this is what I also wanted to see from M80 nonetheless because this new roster does allow them to be a lot more versatile in these international plays. Yeah, I'm going to be a little bit of a devil advocate here and say that in general, Liquid has also been struggling yeah. in Brazil. So again, we, we, it's it's very liquid where you, they have a struggling period and then they just bring it all back and then it's struggling again. But in terms of the schedule, in terms of the games that we have coming your way, here on the A stream, it is going to be 1-0 matches. The matches of the teams that have already one win in their pocket. I'm really interested to see this because at the end of the day, these are going to be quote unquote, the more competitive matches. These are the teams that have already proven themselves to a certain extent. And we're starting right off the bat with Dark Zero up against Secret. Yeah, this should be one of the better ones, in my opinion, here that I'm looking at. Another good one is at the end of the day, and that being the bleed ITB. But yeah, to start out this, I mean, honestly, all the games have been good so far. There hasn't really been any blowout. So to start out the major, the way that this has been going on, this is exciting nonetheless for any of these games. So I take that back. All of these games look really okay. exciting and fun to li watch, listen to, talk about. So I am looking forward to jumping to this first one, though, of this Dark Zero secret. I actually just noticed that SSG lost to ITB, and now they're facing BDS. One of the worst hey. You could ever face in zero one. Yeah, that ain't that ain't looking. Too Are you great. saying that because you're an EU representative on the desk? No, right. come on, I'm not really? biased. I'm not that mm. biased. Come on, I'm okay. biased. I'm totally biased. No, I, I, I was actually thinking BDS versus um, the team they played against. I just blanked out. I don't know which team they played against. They played Furia. They, they played Furia. Furia. I was like, I, I thought that's Hard the grand final. Forget about. It. Yeah, no, but I was like, <laughs> I was like, it's it's gonna be Phase or it's gonna be Furia. But yeah. These two were like, in my opinion, like grand final potential. Yeah. So BDS is starting 0-1, but they have a good reason for it. Yeah, uh, you know what? That's that's on the B stream. That's something to be looking forward to as well. But here on the A stream, the first game that we're going to be looking at is going to be Dark Zero going up against Secret. So make sure you stick around because this one has all the potentials of being a banger. Welcome back, everyone, to the Manchester Major. We have Secret going up against Dark Zero after a 7-3 and three win against FaZe Clan. That's how they're starting off their run. Yeah, that was highly unexpected. Like we said before, I think FaZe came in as probably one of the most anticipated team here and, and Secret as the Dark Horse. But I'm not surprised, honestly. They, they have rebuilt the team the right way. They, they've rebuilt around three key players that were Grubby uh, uh, and Savage, especially. Um, and at the same time, with Adrian, the addition of Adrian 
Bitcoin, I think, especially has helped them a lot in the shot calling, in having a more versatile um, play style. And it's not only about having highly skilled players anymore, they actually play it, uh, as a team. And Joom especially was stellar against FaZe. It's a, a real clash of theories because they don't play at all like Dark Zero. Well, I mean, it was still surprising to me that they did find that success against a very structured team like FaZe. Now you're going against a team like Dark Zero that is, again, another structured team. But what's different between both FaZe and Dark Zero is they both have their own little idiosyncrasies of, of how they have that structure. Whereas I do think FaZe is better on that side of structure, but still, DZ is no slouch when it comes to how they play in a structured environment. Yeah, particularly though when we're looking at Dark Zero and the fact that they heavily rely on having these structures in place, my question then comes, they just had a game against Beast Code. Yeah, and uh, the game against Beast Coast, that's a familiar face. So they come yes. into this playing someone that they're used to. They obviously find that success. They do find that win over them. But now you're playing against a team like Secret that you don't know. You also didn't have a lot of prep because they literally just finished, then just found out who they're playing against, which is Secret. So there's not really a lot of prep for a team that I talk about that is super structured, that needs that prep. I still think that they will find some success here. But again, they don't have as much prep that they probably would have liked going into this. Yeah, I think if Dark, Dark Zero runs with their defaults, they have all the chances to take it. In my opinion, secret, secret beating FaZe is mostly because they were finding these opportunities yeah. because FaZe was spreading around. It's not at all the same place as for Dark Zero. They're not going to leave them opportunities to seize. So I think for me here, the, the biggest ceiling for Secret is are they going to be able to open these opportunities when they're not given to them? Yeah, and that is something that we're going to have to wait and see. But first of all, whether what map we're actually going to be going to, what's going to be the playground for this best of one. You snooze, you lose, and I think that puts a very heavy emphasis Dang. on where we'll be going and it will be bank. So this is a good pick or end up for Secret nonetheless. I mean, DZ, they are a structured team, but this is a very big map. That is a lot of space that you have to yeah. clear and work together. So that could play into Secret's favor. But on that same side of that note is DZ will be playing together. They are going to be very focused and drone heavy at clearing. So if they find you, you are going to need to buddy up with the teammate and try to get that opening engagement going in your favor. Yeah, Do we actually... have a favorite then for this matchup? Yeah, I would say I would say it's Secret still. But, okay. Okay, EU bias. EU bias. Okay. I'm not biased. I always say Secret. No, but the reason for this is I actually believe it's one, if not their most preferred map, actually in the map pool, they have a 71% win rate on it. And like you said, it's a really big map with lots of opportunities to play aggressive, to fall back to the bomb site, to find different yeah. paths, not get punished by Dark Zero. So I think if they play the same way they play against, against FaZe, they have all the reasons, all the tools to beat them. That's completely fair, but I will say, yeah. I'm not an NA bias, but I do have to go with Dark Zero here because they are very concrete in how they clear these big maps. Mm -hmm. And again, they are very confident in how they clear this. They take map control, whatever that is. They like to put that pressure on teams and make them get a little overzealous. And that's where I think Secret might fold, yeah. where FaZe doesn't okay. necessarily apply pressure that way. NA and EU on the desk. We have NA against EU in the <laughs> server, but we also have NA and EU on the caster desk. So let's head over to Pengu as well as Intera to break this one down. Thank you so much, and great to see all the new faces on the desk. New, of course, for this event, not new in general, because all of you are very experienced, just as all 10 players in the server have been experienced at LAN events now that they've at least played a single game. Obviously, more experience on the side of Dark Zero than we see on the side of Secret. Both of these teams fighting, grinding, getting here. Yeah. That Secret match might just have been one of the biggest upsets of the day. Yeah, I was sitting there watching it. Oh, you know, Secret might get one or two rounds against Face Clan. That'd be pretty good for them. They got a lot more than that. <laughs> He's laughing because I dabbed. You dabbed. I yeah. dabbed. You dabbed. You dabble sometimes. It happens. Sometimes. On occasion, off camera, of course, usually. This is actually the first time that you and I are going to be casting a number of these players on Secret. Yeah, that is actually completely. I think it's the first time. Dare I say casting secret, yeah, in a at least a very long while. I've casted the organization before. Yeah, I mean the org, yes. But I, I don't think you and I have this no, necessarily, so. I don't think so. Always nice to get a new look at new teams. As fun as it is for you as a viewer to see these teams do battle for the first time and see teams from APAC and Brazil go up against one another, it's equally exciting for us to be able to lend our voices to teams and players that well, we've never had that opportunity to do before. Arbiter Benz playing out here on Bank. Nothing too out of the norm so far. Of course, he's bound to do those basement bombs on hatches and, you know, heart breach from far away from the upstairs CO attack. 
Though it could be in the sound, it's just like your staple, very common bank operator bands where you know it's hard to roam, it's hard to roam rather. So Dogby makes that a nightmare. That gets banned out to make defenders a little bit safer. But then Asami the gets banned to then again weaken the defense. Valkyrie bank, very big map, especially a lobby portion of the map. Those Valk camps can be hit in so many different corners. So that's gonna be moving play. Also gives the attackers a bit more. I guess versatility on the attacking side. You can now flex, you know, onto other operators, not have to play the IQ. It takes up a full operator spot just to the find the cameras from the Valkyrie, but this does leave a potentially difficult operator to deal with for Dark Zero, as Solis is in play now, actively in this round by Savage from Secret. And Secret, they're a team that loves to play around information, but also denying it. And Dark Seal, they love knowing what they want to do next. They need drone works to do that, or in this case, Canadian on the Monty Operator, for example. So we gotta keep an, um, or an eye rather on that drone count top left. Four drones shot already in this first round. Won't be long until Solus loses her ability to use her scanner in the prep phase, so savor it while you have a chance. This is low hanging fruit. Let me pick it for a second. Good thing they got Canadian off a gun. <laughs> All right, I got it out of my system. All right, I mean, I'll be honest, Canadian, he's got the strats, he's got the brain, right? I'm not the biggest fan of Canadian on Monty. Usually, he does it for reasons that it's easier to control everything that's happening, to call the right strategy. You have that top-down overview, don't to worry about your positioning, just extend the shield, walk around. But Canadian doesn't use the Monty as, like, a quote-unquote Monty player would where he will get kills and push in aggressively and force defenders off positions. It's more about controlling his own players to shine, like Pantheon Ninja, for example. They got the Yink with the Chaos Effect, they got the Monty for cover. They could make a play here just directly to approach the bomb side, perhaps. Not a lot of plant denied, just a single C4 and pocket of Doom. That's really it. No smoke, no touch space, no echo. So if Kinnick can walk in, and they can clear Miracle's position, they could arguably just start planting inside a kitchen because Canadian is playing Monty. It's not usually that easy, though, is it? Not usually. There's the roam. That's going to make things more difficult. That's step one. Clear out the roamers. Impacts will soar over the head of the Montane to try and dislodge whatever Selmas have been applied. And, well, it works out. Nape softened up as Adrian takes his licks, too. Pambazoo dies. NGR taking some damage as Groovy looks for the flank. So Claymore down, and Groovy can just skate around it. But unfortunately for him, NJR is in a great position to greet him. Canadian has lost one. Boosting there goes an Adrenal Surge, just to try and top up the players that you see that have taken some damage from DZ. Both NJR and Nafe are not as healthy as they were to start off this round, certainly not. One Nitro Cell, so that explosive could deal some damage to Canadian and the Monty as he tries to get the plant down, but I doubt it would kill him. Now the Rome clear with one minute to go, moving their way through Archives. Miracle on the board, goodbye Nafe. Goodbye to the Flores. Oh, a nice trade back from NJR. The mayor's office right now at the top of blue, Nick. And with that kill, they can plant now because now Kenya walks in with that extended shield, only planting again. That one C4 that can't reach from the back of the bomb side, so Adrian has to get a flank off here to kill it Savage. Not just, yeah, not just Adrian, there's two of them. Savage taking down NJR, Adrian eliminating Bolo and the Monty in sight alone. Canadian has no choice but to pull out the pistol himself. It doesn't work. A <laughs> Triumphant, victorious <laughs> scream from June's secret. Take round number one. And honestly, I understand what DZ was trying to do, but yeah. the failure to punish the Solus early on in the round came back to haunt you as that timer continued to tick away. One thing that I really liked there from Secret is, well, there's two things. The late round, it was that they they allowed Canadian to plant on the bomb side. They had the Savage playing Solus. He said, okay, guys, he's planting now. Now we push three defenders against three attackers, but Canadian is planting. There's only two actual attackers in the server that can fight back. Just a 3v2 advantage for them. Great decision making. But earlier in the round, I think the bigger play was that often we see a Solus player they will be the one flanking. They can see the drones, they can see the claymores, but then Solus can die. What they did is that they had Solus scan for the claymores and scan for the drones on the top floor of the map, and they had the frost operator, who's completely useless because the frost mats are been placed down, etc. The utility is pre-placed in the prep phase. The frost flank. So he said, there's a claim over there, claim over there, drone watching you here. He takes them down. He dies in the flank attempt, but it's okay because Solus is still alive for late round. So secret, great knowledge of when to use what Five operator and get the maximum amount of value throughout that entire round from start to finish.
attacker's objective is to move the bomb. This is quite the extension up onto the top floor now for Secrets. The bomb site is not up there with them. It's lockers down in the basement. So Amonti will be brought yet again from Dark Zero, but they have some different tools this time. Huh. If you fear the roam, who's one of the best operators right now to deal with it? Monty Demos? And you got both of them, 4DZ. NJR was exceptional with his shots in the previous round. Yeah. Now you're going to put him on Demos? I like All right. <laughs> and that's also like when it comes to Dark Seer, what Nave has allowed DC to do is be more flexible as a team because now you have Nave, NJR, and Canadian playing all these kind of different flex operators. Pambusu can be entry and box, sure, but can also play Ying and be an entry on that kind of execute operator. So DC can now do a lot more than with the previous iteration of their roster, but they are up against a secret who is strategically, I think they have a really high level understanding of what operators to play at what point and how to utilize them. For example, in this round, they're playing Clash, heavily counters the anti robot, of the Monty and the Demos. You can walk in people's faces. You have good clean intel. And you have really strong gunners in Doom, Adrian, Savage, and Gooby who can play behind the Clash to make plays as well. So I like this kind of counter setup against Dark Zero, and it's looking pretty good so far because half done is burnt, and DC have only just entered the building. Hostile tag. <laughs> Can't help if you notice that there's a couple Phase Clan charms on the side of Secret. I don't know if that was done earlier or in response. Oh, you what? You're dead. He's dead. No, don't say swears like that. The Clash burnt to a crisp inside of servers, and honestly, an excellent counter from Secret yeah. if Miracle had been able to survive. But look at the lineup on the right side of Secret. There's nothing to stop a Capital. Well, my obviously the main counter to deal with him. The Clash just killed off. Not much you can do. Unsurprising, by the way, NJR's using Deimos to find Adrian. So where's the Solus? Find that out. Now you've got great information. There's only three more players on Secret whose locations you might not know where they are. Yeah, and they have no C4s in pocket. It's just three toxic base from Doom. There's 48 seconds left. So statistically right now for DC, just walk in, bait out of smoke, wins repeat three times. The fourth time there's no toxic babes, you can plant down that diffuser because you have the Monty. Secret had to go for a flank or some ridiculous shots on the bomb side to get back into this round. Canadian's gonna try it. Doom gets picked off. A nice Eight. shot from Savage. Next one up. Savage exactly, doing some exactly. serious yeah. damage. It's off to Groovy left on site. Now Pam Bazoo will join the party up on top of blue. Get the read on to Savage. Diffuser down. Canadian will watch over that. You have a Monty in this position. It's so challenging to deal with it. Bolo peeking around the corner. Groovy reduced to one HP to get the kill. Now if you're Dark Zero, all you need to do is play the waiting game. Diffuser past the halfway point. Groovy's whereabouts continue called by Canadian, and it's the skeleton key to actually get the job done. Good read, and well, I mean, there wasn't much HP on the side of Groovy, but <laughs> no. at close range, the skeleton key can do a deceptive amount of damage. In that instance, you could sneezed on Groovy, and he would have died. 1-1, one, one, the scoreline. I, I do think that that entire run kind of falls apart the moment that Miracle dies on the Clash alone instead of server because the whole idea there is that Clash can play server for a very long time and just burn down the timer on the clock, but then Clash dies to a single capital fire right there. You're stuck in a corner. Well, okay, two fires. Stuck in a corner. No one can help Miracle whatsoever. And then the only plant deny are those three toxic canisters. And when there's still 40 seconds left, it's not enough. The flank didn't happen. I mean, defenders not open area control, but the hatch has been forced, so it doesn't really matter. Dark Zero didn't have to problem solve that much off the map. It was just take server, deal with the clash, start planting, and they just locked down the flank with drones and manpower. And that's what DC did it really well. Because Savage, when he flanked late round, he did find the first kill from the server staircase, but there was one or two more players from DC and a drone on the flank watch for backup because they know the only way they lose that round is if they get flanked or if they literally start whiffing every single bullet in their magazine on the bomb side itself canadian <laughs> is on blitz now so we've seen a slow methodical i would say a, not even slow a good paced but on the slower side version of dark zero we might see one of these rare moments with dc they go fast this is a very real accountability from their matchup against Beast Coast on Cafe. We're just going to put them on shields where shooting isn't really quite as important. 
Bank has always been traditionally a very friendly map to shields, even before yeah. their effectiveness was improved upon, as you see now with the current meta. They're gonna fly. Okay, so they might just either rush janitors, fly down the main skylight, have one guy on the window or pelt bombs out, of course, and one guy go in heaven. All Kin has to do is basically get the first kill or get traded by his teammate. They need space. If they can get in and keep the ground that they gain, it's okay even if Kinnan dies. <laughs> just about everyone in Groovy's oh. Magnet has found out, but Savage in a spot that lives up to his namesake. Canadian goes for the dive on in. He face plants. Savage torn apart. But NJR and Bolo give the numbers advantage to Dark Zero. Now it's Pamba's turn as he drops Miracle. Inside of Janitor, swings around. But Joom's just a better shot. With the Roni, that high rate of fire is going to do some serious damage. Joom, another. A 2v2. B's going out. And another for Joom, who's just unstoppable in this position. So little light, it can't even really be spotted. NJR will now tussle with Groovy. Look at the HPs on the side of Secret. Very, very limited. Two bullets from NJR, but he's going to have a reflex test. Try to draw him out. Down goes Groovy, not anticipating the reposition. June's looking for oh. the cross! And he gets siege timing as NJR switches to the secondary. Secret answer back after dropping the previous round. One HP on two separate players stocking really poor placements on the map there, and yet they still win out. NTR, you know, just had to stick that primary. It's easier to say hindsight, stick the primary, keep your gun up, one bullet also matters. He's like, I want my bullets, switch to secondary. It's faster than reloading, but with the right timing, Doom can swing and get a freebie in the one versus one. I think DC's play there was actually pretty good from a top-down level of analysis, but I think there might have been one small overstep, but I'm not entirely sure because we didn't see it. Basically, there is this interaction with Solas and Blitz, where Solas can see exactly where Blitz is at all times, because whenever Blitz has a shield out, it counts as an active gadget because you can press the flashbang effect on the shield. So unless Canadian had put that shield on his back from the very beginning of the round on spawn, they knew exactly where Blitz was coming from, which is why they were raid waiting right below the skylight, pre-firing the moment that Blitz went for the execute. So that might have been the case, and if it was, Five great use of Solas by Secret, and DC not really playing around that particular super Attackers small specific circumstance of interaction. Bombsite rotation starts anew. Despite the fact that Secret dropped that locker CCTV site down on the bottom floor, it remained open. Secret opted to go to CEO upstairs and will now head back to open area. This is where things went quite well for them. Small changes for Dark Zero. They like the Deimos. They'll bring it again. This time, Pambazoo will ride along that operator. And if you're one of the defenders, you got to worry about the destructive capabilities of those three boogies being brought by Ram. That operator here as well. Like, it all works now. Not necessarily for a flank over the counter Canadian Monty, but just like it's nice to have. Canadian can't get in your face too aggressive now without a gun behind him in fear of Oryx dashing, of course. So I like, again, Secret, good understanding of what do they want to bring, and they have counters for the particular, same particular operator of Monty, but in different ways. It can be a C4 below, it can be an Oryx, it can be a Clash. So the Canadian and Dark Zero have to constantly problem solve the what ifs and the possibilities, the potential different dangers, and it's hard to keep track of what is actually happening each and every single round when it's a different scenario every single time. I don't know if it's just the application of the Solus or DZ holding on to their drones quite well, but with about half the round to go, only two of the drones have been removed from Dark Zero's arsenal. You shouldn't really have much of a problem with information here, especially since you've got those Twitch drones. You might be scattered throughout the map. They are. Dave will go back onto one very briefly, and then, of course, the Deimos, too. So much information right now at Dark Zero's fingertips. Yep. And yet they still get a little bit surprised in the angle there, perhaps. But Canadian, again with the Monty, can just walk in. But be careful, because it is an Aura. So if he wants to get aggressive here with Groupies and just dash into Canadian, he could go for it, but there has to be a trade behind him. Grenade used just to zone Groovy off of his position, but while he has the dash, the other benefit of the Oryx is the ability to jump up. Nave needs to secure both of these picks and does so. They both dive right into him. <laughs> say goodbye to your Oryx, say goodbye to your Solus. Fender is still on the board, allows Canadian to be nearsighted. As you know, Adrian's position in the corner. He seems wise to it now. 
There go the boogie drones above Canadian, who looks for some assistance. Everybody is still upright from Dark Zero. Oh, the hatch is gone as it looked like he needed a quick escape. Miracle and Joom, the last two standing for secret. Nobody from Dark Zero yeah, removed right. just yet. Joom will retake from above, a flawless round. Disappears as Bolo is removed from this round. NJR, one of his own diffuser, running away against secret. And Miracle will look for kill number two. The Monty was coming at him in a hurry. Naif, a third kill in the round. That's another for DZ. Back and forth between these teams. When you allow Darkseer to do what they want to achieve in a round, that is the outcome that you see right there. It is a scary team to work against because they were a bit slow in the beginning. You think, okay, they're taking their first gunfight about halfway through the round. That's a very slow Dark Zero. We don't like it when they're going slow because they always run out of time. But there's a big kind of, well, this is the reason why. Nave had to get ready in the basement with 60 seconds left. They force Groovy to, you know, drop down the hatch with the grenade. And then Secret that, okay, they might try and catch him off guard downstairs. So they send the second body and help him out. Nave gets both kills. That right there, that mini play that Dark Zero, they put into motion from the beginning of the round, that gets them everything that they needed. Once they get those first two kills, they have main stairs control for the flank. Canadian can walk with the Monty, rotate a guy on the exterior window to get that long line of sight. So the only real sight play with a C4, tied by the hatch that we saw, and that's it. You just play it. It's game over in that round. So Secret almost need to disrupt Dark Seal more Five in these rounds. It's the same thing when they DC won their first round of basement attack. DC took server, DC planted, round was over. Secret need to get in the fray earlier in the round and try and stop Dark Zero from achieving their goal. Otherwise, DC will start picking up more rounds as this time goes on. A lot of data that we can talk about in the regional leagues as to how bank is played, but... One of the fun things of live events is after the first to second day of full team action, yeah. then we can start to look at these numbers. There's a brief read on to June. Nave secures the kill and out goes the death mark from Pambazoo. He'll track him down. Teams tend to get their blinders on them. Right, you gotta realize there's four other people, or well, three technically in this case, on the map when that death mark is out. So while you might have this battle to the death between these two teams, you can relay that information to your teammates, and then they can try to punish Deimos, who might not know where the other three players are. Gotta be careful, that's for sure. And this is the thing, Secret, they wanna get in the fight early, they lose smoke. Now they brought a bag of plant denier in the echo, but the smoke is the big time denier. That's what buys you that, you know, the seconds on the clock that's gonna make it close enough for echo to matter. So now secret, they gotta play another win condition. They might have to get on the offensive here, try and go for the isolation kills with the echo of the solar oh. being shot down again. NJR has seven kills through four and a half rounds at this point, and an eighth could be had as well. So that looks like Miracle defending the top of blue stairs. This is a successful bomb site for Dark Zero when they last attacked this. And the numbers right now are certainly favoring them, but you've got a Yokai drone still available. At least one that we saw. Miracle's got access to the C4. But losing Joom early, losing that smoke, completely throws a spanner in the works for Secret because you can't do that usual rhythm to deny time. Yep, and now you lose Solus for Intel shortly after, so the win condition is definitely fading away here for the defensive side. Maybe one saving grace here could be Miracle on the server staircase, get a couple of kills, that could be possible, but time is actually becoming winnable now with the Yoga Jones. 40 seconds left, DC yet to go for the next step of execution, but it looks like they're rotating to the main staircase, maybe a lobby hatched up here, and changing up their approach, they don't want to deal with Miracle. There goes the Yokai drone as well. Only one Goyo canister unaccounted for. There's one at the top of blue. Adrian dies inside of lockers. And now it's free for Canadian to go for oh, this yeah. plant. The suspicion was maybe they'll go towards the front of the site. Groovy with oh, what a beautiful yeah. flick. NJR reduces Miracle to rubble. It's all up to Groovy, who again is on one point of HP. How many rounds have we seen a player just sitting on a single point of HP in this matchup? Gotta think if you're on attack and operator like Finca can help on defense. Somebody like a Thunderbird, maybe. The three remaining players of Dark Zero do what we knew they were all gonna do, which is find the remaining portion of Groovy's life and throw it in the bin. 
DZ win back-to-back -back rounds, the first time that either of these teams have done it so far. It also guarantees three rounds through the first half for DZ. They can't lose. The best thing that Secret can do is muster up a draw and then go to the second half and hope to have a better result. And in all three rounds of DC won so far, they planted down the diffuser, and even in one of the rounds that they lost, they planted it, basically lost the round or as it went down. So very big objective focus here from Dark Zero, just as we know that they'd like to do, and also a very kind of classic approach to bank. The newer style of seats that we say, it's wow, very aggressive, very attackers. in your face, very gun reliant. And I think DC, one of the beauties about them as a team is that they can show the world that you can still play that older, slower style of Siege and find success with it. Yeah, there are certain matchups against certain teams or maps where it's not ideal, but for Bank and for like Clubhouse, for example, it's remaining. all about setup and understanding where on the map you need to go, when Five to go there, left. and with all the specific small interactions like, is the enemy playing a mirror? Jack Are they playing an echo? Are they playing a castle? All those kind of key operators, they will change how you have to approach it on the attacking side, because what rooms matter now more than others? DC do, do that with the help of... Can, oh. They're gonna rush the bombs at Parker. They're gonna go fast. And Pampazu sprints in, but Miracle anticipates this. Now it's the human shield of Canadians. Joom takes a beating. Canadians been forced into a bad spot oh, now. No. Shot through the wall as they don't have Miracle accounted for. The smokes have gone off, but all of this has been completely useless. 30 seconds removed from the timer means that you've got so much of this round left to go. Yet only two players. A bit of staying power as Finca will emerge yet again to yeah. offset some of that chip damage that's been done. Bolo using it selfishly as he was the remaining player on the team that was not at oh, full HP. But Dave and Bolo have quite a task ahead of them. Oh yeah, I mean, DC, they gotta play this perfectly and Secret gotta do a bit of trolling. That's the only way into this for you. If they sit back, yeah, there we go. Replenish that utility. Put it down again because you got spares in pocket for Miracle and just establish crossfires. No one can die alone on every secret. If one guy gets into a fight, there's got to be a backup nearby to make that 1v1 into a 2v1 in your favor. Play the numbers, play the bodies. Activating shock drone. Oh, usually we talk about how the 5v3 is the least safe lead in Siege. Typically, you'll find one or two players getting a little cocky, and now yeah. all of a sudden it becomes a 3v3. Obviously not ideal for whichever team had the advantage at that point. Almost a minute burn since the slaughter that happened. It takes some kills here, right? Get some confidence for Bolo Nave's side. Feel good about it. Look better on the scoreboard. Lion's share of the kills for Dark Zero in the hands of NJR. Those are in the grave at the moment. Canadian yet to find a kill, but he's been playing these utility operators with the exception of Capitao previously. Yeah. It's been all shields for the team captain. Oh, Nave seemed to have given his position away, and Joom was a bit delayed to react to it. Bolo wants to draw somebody out, but he can't find what he's looking for. Maybe drop a nade over. Bolo inching his way towards the site, Nick. What do you do here if you're DZ? You swing right, you flick left, you hope you hit your crazy shots, time it together. No, nope, just pulling a 1v4. Well, I mean, he got one kill. Takes down Miracle, but Savage has the trade and just simply too much for Dark Zero to do, given the time. Miracle really, really excelling. In the very start of that round, so effective at shutting down DZ's entry and really defanging what seemed to be quite a vicious entry from yeah. Dark Zero, right? You get in the bomb site, or well, not technically the bomb site, I guess it was Printer. But getting close Bonus. to the bomb site, <laughs> yeah. as close as you can humanly get within the first 20 seconds. Secret adapted so well to this. Miracle not just the first kill, but smart enough and adept enough to retreat over towards staff, shoot through the wall, and then stay alive for much of the remainder of that round. Secret answer back, and they salvage what could have been a rough go of it. And it denies Dark Zero a lead heading into this second half. I really love the idea of, you know, Dark Seer playing a, a very quick last round because they've been going at like a normal pace the all the rounds prior. The but two things. They didn't use their smoke grenades to block off an outside from the window jump into the close right of the window. So they get crossfire on. And they didn't really commit. It was Canadian in first, Pamus were right behind them, everybody else outside the building waiting for something to happen. So you got a full commit. 
that's a secret I think they are very good at. They got those timings down, 3 to one played together. They got the crossfires that we saw playing around each other on the side itself. Just playing close together, that's all you need sometimes. Secret down their attack. They're gonna bring a similar lineup as the Dark Zero, but without the shield here in round number one. It's about counter intel, the IQ, and the Twitch, and then they wanna lock people down in corners with the Grim and the Capital, and use those fire arrows to maybe get a kill or two later on. But first, before anything happens, you gotta go for the room clear. That's how basement works. Either you rush the bomb side, not gonna happen this round, but it's up in the lineup. So you gotta clear it out. Nadian with a C4 downstairs, misses his timing. Doesn't even do a single point of damage onto Groovy, so he's up and alive. And those C4s can be very crucial later on. That was the only one from DC, so if this comes to a late round plant and I situation, DC not looking too good. They gotta get some wins early on this round. Well, Savage starts things off with Canadian, who has no excuse to not find the scoreboard in the second half, unless he were to play Clash the whole time. Doom traded off, so there go your Twitch drones, which is great news, frankly, for both the Echo and, more importantly, for the Goyo. If those Go if those Goyo canisters have yet to be popped, Bolo is going to be in such a good spot now that the Twitch drone has been removed, because when you look at Bank, usually your primary focus is a Twitch. Take out the Goyo canisters and maybe get mirrors if there's a mirror on the board. Yep. In this case, Echo, of course, as well. Also, a nice thing here from, from DC, they put a bunch of meat jammers in the server staircase and just like, they're not playing there at all. But it's taking secret like 30, 40 seconds. They're not even cleared it yet, actually. I don't think they know that server staircase is clear because of those meat jammers. So they're spending all this time opening the hatch, droning, getting jammed, droning, getting jammed. They don't really know until recently. We just got a good look at it. The Goyo canisters are still set up by the door on the table. So you've bought yourself a lot of time. Each of those canisters last 20 seconds. Well, you pop one canister, you stagger it well enough. There goes one. There's another. <laughs> Trying to get shot by Secret. And there they go, they get the vantage point. But that last canister went off at 46 seconds. That means if you want a default plant, you can't do it until there's 25 seconds left on the clock. Yeah, you got Yokai's and three toxic bits with Secret here. Like they gotta go for a deep plant somewhere else, not by default, or explode around the bomb side on in itself to take some couple of kills there, but Bolo swings first and gets punished for it. Nade goes down, and while MJR doesn't have to worry about immediate death, it's on him and he backs away now. All those fires have stopped. Toxic babes to be thrown out, Ooh. littering the site. But he's actually missed the default spot. He absolutely has to nail this one. Hard to tell if he did. Miracle stumbling off of his position. Both teams coming to blows. As now Miracle will attempt yet again. Nave looking for it, but the IQ might have just saved the round. Pambazoo and Nave will need to shoot them their way out of this position. As Savage bails off of that spot. Pambazoo's retaking from above. Diffuser not working in DZ's favor. And Pambazoo doing his best, but it's a huge round from Savage. Nave hops on, and he won't be able to stick it a 4K from Savage to give Secret their first win on attack and through the first round on attack. Not only four kills, he shot both Echo Drones, and the second one, of course, it's just, it's so well read from Secret. Where sure enough, it's not that hard. There's one echo drone left, they all know it. But in those really tense moments, you're gonna cover the plant with your primary. No, Savage goes out for the scanner on IQ. There's two seconds left on the clock and Dark Zero, Nave, who is playing echo, you can see it in the, the player positions. He said, do not swing. I got the echo drone. Don't like risk your life here. So DC plays so far back. They're not even attempting to get any sort of gunfights because they're gonna win on time. And then, when there's like a second or two left, IQ finds the last Yoka drone that could have stopped the entire round, and then the bomb goes down, and now you gotta run into your opponent, which is just not ideal. So much value there. Dark Zero, they almost had it, but then again, almost just isn't good enough. The early C4 from Canadian, him dying shortly after, those small things on the basement, bumps out on bank here, they can be crucial. And that's one of the big notes that I always have when we prep for a Dark Zero match. Will the opponent isolate Canadian and take him down early? Because it is a very common trend. The Canadian is going to roam somewhere when it pulls Valkyrie, Solis, or C4 typically below or above the bomb site. Usually very much isolated. And in that previous round, Canadian dies alone early, and the rest of his team, they pay the price. They play that at 4v5 with less utility, and the outcome is as expected, secret they win. I know some of the analysts in 
conversation have been critical of the role the Canadian plays. Looking to strike and eventually get onto the scoreboard. Not yet, but Savage's entry from over towards Square has met the hands of Bolo. Changing mags. A hell of a shot by Bolo. Lots of players know exactly what it's like to be on the receiving end of that. Candela is now over towards that stock trading doorway, but nobody's taking the bait just yet. Bolo engaging the smart glasses in case Ying decides to focus on that part of the map. Right now, all of the forces from Secret are split, almost as if they're playing completely independent of one another. It might say that's a bit disorganized, or it could be a team that really trusts each other to get the job done. Adrian looking for an opportunity and just might get it, because now Nave's position is somewhere else. Players seemingly not hearing this, by the way. <laughs> As Chaos now breaks out, Polo swings in. He's got both kills for DZ so far. Secret. Drawing even into a 3v3, and now it's Bolo's turn to fall off and seek some safety in the open area bomb site. Yeah, we have his isolation alone there from Secret, but they're struck from so many different angles with the same overall objective. Take top floor control from Heaven Skylight, stock window, and up the lobby staircase. And honestly, because they lost Savage early on, it's now in a three versus three. But they got two kills at the cost of one, so it's a positive right, trade that. for the attack inside. But I will say, this position right now in the map still favors Dark Seal. They can lock down the bomb for now. Secret, those bees gotta get some immense value Reloaded. right now. The last one in pocket of Ruby, all they gotta find a pick. Ruby gets himself in harm's way, dealt with by NJR and Pam Bazoo. It's oh. not just Bolo to get these kills, but Miracle punches it anyway! Good Lord of Mercy. His name, literally what Secret needed in that round, and he gets the job done. Takes matters into his own hands. Unsurprising that Dark Zero responds immediately with the timeout. <laughs> we get to see all the long faces. Yeah. And I suspect if you had player cams, you can assess the exact moment that the hearts broke on that team. Oh, a miracle indeed just happened for Secret and you know, there's been some close rounds. It's 5 3 right now, but it's been two separate rounds now where Secret have had a 1 versus 1 clutch, or in that case, a 1 versus 3 clutch happen. This could have been 5 3 for Dark Zero, but those small moments in the rounds seems to favor one team a lot more than the other right now in the clutch factor. I mean, as I said, like, strategically, Dark Zero's in a great spot in that round, but then what happens? You jump in the window, get three kills. What do you do against that? Well, play better together, have that crossfire, or play keep away. Every single person from Dark Zero were happy to swing that gunfight, thinking, oh, we got this one, it's easy. Look at this. First swing on chassis, second swing here. I mean, you're spotted by the beast. You have no choice here if you're NJR, the last player alive. But that first swing, not necessary. Me oh my! Accountability is something that is well practiced yeah. by Dark Zero. And I'm trying not to beat the same drum all the time, but Canadians' inability to affect these rounds in a score perspective, because nobody with any brain in their head would argue that his leadership doesn't affect the rounds. But the fact that he's unable to get a kill this deep into the match. Yes, we can hand wave away the first half because he played on shield. That's fine. Yes. But you're now in round nine. You've had multiple opportunities on defense to get a single kill. You've been unable to do that. And yet he often plays on these high value operators because as he's put it before, when he's able to play somebody like Solus, he gets a lot of information on him. Yeah. And it's hard to argue against that information helping his team, but you gotta get kills too. Not just that, but I've been actually looking at it because whenever Canadian dies on defense so far, it's like you can die alone, nothing happens, or you die and teammate gets a kill. Canadian just kind of dies and nothing comes after. That base on the mute dies, no trade. Previous round, he died, and sure, Bolo got a kill, but in a whole nother player across the bomb side, speaking of the devil, Canadian got his first kill on Tradrian on the repel and lobby. Great shot from him. He's now on the scoreboard, but it comes in round number nine. Claps in the chat. It's a we five need some claps in the chat, please. So it I mean, a very high profile target. Yeah. That's your main hard destructor. The only hard destruction that's actually present, because if you look at the secondary lineups, none of these operators have brought the can opener. Yeah. None of them have a secondary hard breach. And there goes the shield. 
And with it, you've got to suspect that this severely hurts the chances of Secret. A run out by Canadian, and Miracle gets him. But that was a relatively easy kill. Yeah, I mean, when Munzi dies like that, I mean, the, the, the very simple phrase you can use is, it's so over. I mean, the whole, like, strategical point right now for Secret is out the window. It's just like last round of open area. You gotta just go for broke, get those kills, go crazy, and have that clutch factor. You've lost Adrian on Heart Breach, on Heart Breach rather, and the Munzi who's gonna enable the entire team to thrive. And all you've taken down is the first line of defense on, of Canadian, who still only has that single kill. Now? You can tell us, walk up a staircase, and you have a triple man crossfire staring you down. There is no easy pathway in. DC, they gotta show their discipline here, and that they can play together as a team. I mean, it's also the best player to lose for Dark Zero. It is, absolutely. I mean, let's, It's let's, a Rooney as well. Yeah, I mean, it's a Rooney. It's, it's an operator with a good gun, but it's on a player who hasn't really been living up to his killing potential. And he got his one. And he got his one. Yep. So you get a kill, and you trade off. And now there's four much more worrisome adversaries that you have to deal with here. Secret cannot run behind this clock for too much longer, as there's 30 seconds left in this ninth round. The gap that they have worked so hard to... Large is now going to shrink with a loss in this round. Bolo positioned in a spot where he's very familiar with. Down goes Miracle. Groovy, one kill. He's dropped on the stairs. And Pambazoo will get the final kill onto Joom as Dark Zero keeps this one close. One round away. And it's an immediate successful conversion on DZ's timeout. Yeah, I mean, that's, again, basic case scenario, right? You have that tough round where they may clutch against you, call it the tickle timeout, and then you win the following round. You buy yourself a little bit of breathing room now if you're DC, thinking, oh, guys, we still got it, and... A little bit of a surprise, maybe, actually. Secret will also call their tactical timeout, not just to, to finish this right now, because you call it now when you're ahead a little bit, or you call it in one or two rounds because then it's 5-5, or worst case for Secret, it would be 6-5 because DC, they win the following rounds. So they want to get ahead of the problem right now, and this also very likely, knowing Twister, the coach of Secret, this is very much a strategical tactical timeout. That's one of his big things right now. He knows the game at a very high level and is able to convert that to his teammates. There was this like fun stat at like SI, I think two years ago, where whenever a coach would take the tactical, tactical timeout, somebody tracked the success rate afterwards if you won or lost that following round. And I think it was Ganis and Twister were both like top five or top three of my memory system, right? And of course, there's no like true meaning to this, like, oh, Secret calls a technical timeout, they always win afterwards. But at the same time, if it's such a common thing that they do well afterwards, there has to be some valuable things shared from the coaching staff to the players that they can convert into round success afterwards. So, wouldn't be surprised to see a relatively big change up, or maybe it's just micro decisions, micro mistakes, also possible. But we know these pro teams, they have these kind of pocket strats cooked up where they work for a single round. And you gotta pick the perfect round and the perfect moment to do it because it only works once. That's a prize factor. The enemy won't be ready for it. We're seeing Monty and Blitz in this round. That is something that you cook up saying, guys, we have this double shield strat where we rush left. third into side and start planting or something crazy like that because I think Thermite, Monty, and Blitz, that screams direct attack for me, not a roam clear. And they're all spawning server side. Monty in server. Blitz gonna go server staircase. This is a pocket strat. It could be a quick one as well if they get the all clear. Server walls are soft and a very similar defensive setup that we saw from Dark Zero previously. Maybe not as much of a rush as we had thought, but still gaining information. Nave is gambling this yokai and what? Canadian dies through the Did he wall. Make it? Wall? Or was he playing server stairs? I didn't see where he was playing. He was shooting through the soft wall. He was inside, he was wall banked. On a there. smoke? <laughs> on a smoke? Against two shield operators? It gets worse. <laughs> you have your Dark Zero, you're doomed. Yeah, you are. Oh, so he sees the Yokai. Nah. There's no way. And that was a one-shot headshot through a wall. Yeah. You have some opinions on that. I do. I don't think that should be allowed. Okay? I think it should do a lot of damage when I just take you out clean like that. But this is my opinion, okay? But I'm sure Canadian who died to it agrees with me. Ooh, Chad, Ooh. Why are you booing me? I'm right. <laughs> a really 
damning loss yeah. for Dark Zero there. Yeah, and I wouldn't even say that's Canadian's mistake. Like, he got information that Munch was on the staircase, Lightning was going to go there to throw a toxic bait to smoke it, which is arguably the right decision to slow down their opponent, but he dies to a wall bang. Who in the right mind is a Munty? Sees the Yoker drone and starts tapping the wall. Miracle's a genius. But look at this DC, they're closing in, but they're losing their gunfights again. Now Pendless off of the count. 3v5 favoring Secret. I don't know how many yokais Nafe still has available. I think the one might have gotten away safely, but the other, who knows? That's one. Bolo still has those Goyo canisters strewn about the bomb site. You just have to play for time here. This is a winnable round for Dark Zero still. Sure. Even though things look so bad, it's still very winnable based on the utility they have. But you've got to start winning these fights. It's and I mean, it, now it's not winnable at this point, actually. Oh, and JR oh. destroys Miracle. Groovy is next. Revolver out. 13 kills for him. As there goes a the smoke and a reload is the smart play. Now around. Destroys Jum. Savage and Adrian is the last two remaining. Savage has been the best gun so far for Secret. He's on the Blitz. It'll all come down to Adrian on the cop. Rich! The 1v5. They had everything going! There's no fucking way he does that! 1v5! A successful re-election campaign for the mayor. He's back, baby! Are you having a nightmare? Wake up! Are you having a nightmare, says Canadian. He haunts you in your sleep. Once again! And it all, it all started here. One. He's still going. <laughs> Attackers dropped the diffuser. Attackers <laughs> dropped the bomb diffuser. I will say this with no exaggeration and no hyperbole. What might be one of the best clutches we have ever seen in the history of this game? And it's so out of nowhere. It just kind of happened. It's Five not even like they misplayed it. No. It's not like they stormed he him. Smoked him. He did it himself. Attackers are moving to the <laughs> it, was, it was a C4. Rising as you came in. It was taking down the entry, shutting down the flank, shutting down the second planet attempt, and just find the last count in the same angle. I mean, I have said this many, many times. I think NDR is super underrated. Not that he is a bad player, but he's a bad player because he's not, but I don't think he gets the praise he deserves. He plays support role for Dark Zero, but he puts up ridiculous numbers. His clutch potential is always there, and he's a phenomenal anchor player as well. His decision making and positioning is one of his strongest, like, parts of his skill set, but he also makes good decisions as well, and has the good gun skill to back it up. He's like a really full rounded player. 5-5 five, five now. Things are very much tied up. Secret starts clutching. DC the answer back in a bigger fashion. And now it comes down to, I think, the mental game. How many more strats do you have? Iterations. Different ways of doing the same thing to keep it new and surprising. But also, losing a round like that, what does that do to you mentally if you secret? It's 1-1 one one trade. Still even a round score. This fire is going to do some damage to Pepper as well. There were some long faces on that bench of Secret, yeah. but they were at least laughing towards the end of it, and you have to keep up the mental at this level. Ooh. Nice swing by Savage as he hits both of the goo mines that were laid out by Pambazoo shortly before his death. That should have been around for Secret, and with what they're doing right now, this should be the match. But it won't be. Dark Zero have earned themselves at least one more opportunity. Savage has been wonderful so far for yes. Secret. He has been the entry, the flex, he's been denying the intel. He can pretty much do it the all right now. Ruby has said his name a couple times, but he's pretty quiet on the scoreboard four and nine, but playing those less sexy roles, the cabins on fire, a lot of drone work, enabling other players like Savage, like Doom in these rounds. NDR again alive, two versus four, better numbers than last, so anything is possible, but that's the four goes wide, doesn't find anybody, and he didn't get shut down as well. He couldn't hit water if he fell out of a boat at this point. <laughs> NJR with 16 kills. He just pulled off a 1v5, and the odds are better this time. <laughs> 1v4, maybe, maybe not on the operator, best designed for it. The pea shooter of the MPX. Limited recoil, I mean, hey.
But How many do you drag down with you before you go? That's they're bleeding him out right now. Look at this. Like last time they were running toward him, they're bleeding him out right. Adrenaline searching, right? He's so ready for either. it. Time, 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 time. It's actually a strategic thing you can oh do in like gosh. a four versus one. And now that's gonna leave his body, it's gonna shake, now it's gonna be over. Smoke going off. Too many targets as they've closed in on him as the soft walls do him yep. no favor. Yep. And Adrian ends it. The Twitch pulling out the sidearm to get the job done. Secret should have just won the match. But they have one more chance to close it up. NJR throwing his team a lifeline in the previous round. Dark Zero. Dire Straits. Bailed out by their performers, not necessarily by the team itself. You can tell that there are some young players on the secret roster. We just saw Adrian, who is uh Adrian is a player that if you're an EOL, like I think any team wanted this kid. He was straight out of rank, playing in some dev stacks, playing some like minor tournaments, etc. Like like gold force and whatnot. I played with him myself as well. Phenomenal potential player. We saw his player cam right there. They won the round. He was shaking. And I'm talking adrenaline, right? You come from playing in your own at your own home, probably at your parents' place, playing ranked. You're a really good player, but the stakes are you're just playing for Elo for fun. You're already champion. Like, what's the point, right? Now you're playing in the big leagues. You're up against someone like Canadian, who if you're if you're any pro league player, you have at one point, or probably you still do to this day, you look up to someone like Canadian, like Bola. I mean, the whole damn roster of the Dark Sea at this point, right? You probably look up to some of your own teammates, even. You're sitting here, Attackers actually beating Faze in your first match for Secret. Now should have beaten Dark Sea, still fighting for it. There is no feeling like it. You, that, that is your dream coming true in front of your very eyes, saying, I have made it, I am here, and I'm doing well, and we're putting up good numbers, but boy, I cannot contain it. Could you have imagined that moment in front of a crowd? Exactly, oh man. The roof on this place would have been blown right off. What a shame. Listen, listen here. Hi, are you attending the Manchester Major? I'm talking to you if you are. Mm. I don't know if you heard the crowd in Brazil, but they were pretty loud. Oh, yeah. I want to hear similar things from you, not just to the Brits, but everybody who's joining from all over the world. Bad start to a pivotal round for Dark Zero. They're living on borrowed time in a way. A bomb has been located. Nave finds an early grave. Secret get the leadoff pick. There's a Monty yet again. The shields have been the story of this map outside of NJR, of course. Yeah, this is the thing, right? When you lose a player on map, like down on match point for DC, everyone's gonna feel you have to make a play now, a hero play that is. Jump out a window, go for a stupid fight, because if you don't, you're gonna choke out very slowly, but very surely. So Secret now, they gotta be ready for this. Played in the front lines, not the greatest player, but he has that experience. He's not gonna shake in these moments, hold his ground, he's not gonna fall back, he knows he's stuck in this corner, but Secret, they have to clear him out. Canadian's just gonna stick it. And oh, Canadian oh, dies to Savage, but his attention was elsewhere. Maybe trusting the mirror of NJR oh, swing. Bolo from long distance. But this one's not going very well for them at all. NJR now gone off the board. It's all up to Pan Bazoo. But it's Secret who will have the party. NJR might have bought his team some time, but it didn't change the actual result. Secret, the better team through and through. They topple Dark Zero 7 5. Taking down FaZe, taking down Dark Zero, and doing it in, I want to say, a convincing fashion, both in the micro things like clutching and small moments, but also that again, top down, their strategies, their orbiter flexing. When they do what things, it's excellent from them. And this is a secret that is a bit like unknown, you know? Internationally speaking, who are these guys? Well, they're here to play. Yeah, I mean, it's a statement match, that's for sure. A 2-0 day for Team Secret is now they're done. The remainder of our matches will be teams that have already competed. Is it Fresh who tweeted out that Adrian might have been one of the most slept on players yep. after map number one? Well, Adrian didn't really have as much of an influence on that matchup, but Secret's depth allowed Savage and Miracle to take hold. Groovy had a couple really good rounds. Yeah. The thing is, is that the whole team showed up. Can't really say the same for Dark Zero after that second match.
No, I agree. And it's, it's a matter of like, I mean, Adrian held his own. He's like 7-7 seven seven or 8-7 in the end there. So 1-1 one one basically. But what every single player is doing to enable others. That's the thing. Canadian, he has experience, the leadership, and the calling. But when he plays in a position where you have to probably get a kill to make that worthwhile to play in those positions, and he doesn't, that's where he falls a little bit flat. That's the one of the only like true big weaknesses of the thing for Dark Seer right now. They don't have five full players in gun positions. I mean, you have to think there were a couple rounds that were even one or two kills from Canadian could have turned yeah, the exactly, tide, right? Exactly. When you've got a matchup as close as this, goes to all 12 rounds, 7-5 is the tightest scoreline you can get yep. until you get to OT. It might have actually been the very first 8-5 we've ever watched, if you consider that <laughs> round they should have ended yeah. up, that they probably should have That's ended fair. up winning. But even, even just a couple successful rounds that's all it would have taken or a couple successful kills and that could have turned even one round and it would have been dark zero going out of the day 2-0 the good news for fans of dark zero is they still picked up that victory earlier against beast coast yeah right Feral. starts to be starts to be a bit concerning when you've lost a couple games and not just one yeah and i just want to make the final point about Canadian is that it's not even that he has to get the kills but when he dies something has to happen afterwards right he trades his life a teammate helps him whatever something has to happen well, one of the stars of the show was Savage, and we've got a post-game interview to hear his thoughts on their match against Dark Zero. Thank you guys so much for that cast. Congratulations, Savage. Two wins in one day. First one against FaZe Clan, now against Dark Zero. What are the emotions right now? I mean, I couldn't hope for a better start, really. I uh, didn't expect it either, but we still take it by, game by game. It's still the same as Zero Zero. We still need to win one more game. We could still go to three to two down, so... We just need to be calm, but yeah, really happy right now. A bit uh, excited, still the nerves going, still the adrenaline going. But yeah, it was a really good one. I can tell there's still adrenaline. You said this wasn't necessarily expected, but you're so close to that main stage at this point in time. What are the expectations moving forward? Because you've proven yourself not once, but twice already. I mean, as I said in the last interview, um, just I hope that we can stay as underdogs in ourselves, in our minds, even though we are 2 0 up, still take it game by game, still not like uh, have us as a favorites to win. We still came here with the low lower expectations than to go two up. So I hope like we just take it game by game and still no pressure on our side. But yeah, I don't know how it's going to go. But yeah, hoping for the best. You're talking about seeing the underdogs in your own minds. Is that as a result of you not wanting to be overconfident, not wanting to get overzealous? What is it exactly that that particular point is important? Yeah, I think you need like a, a, a middle ground, right? You can't uh, be too confident where you uh, undervalue the, the opponents and you also shouldn't be too uh, like low on yourself. So I think where we were at these two games was the perfect, where we didn't ex people didn't expect us to win, but we were still confident in our game. And we are playing with no pressure because we were not the favorites to win. So that's what I mean. I just hope we can stay as the not favorites to win. All right, well, thank you so much for the interview. Enjoy your celebration for the win today. We'll see you around. We're going to be back after the break with an interview with Adrian. So make sure you guys stick around. We'll see you shortly.